Oh boy, here we go. Another fun, maybe controversial episode. We talk about the most overrated exercise uh, exercises that people do, why they do them, and why they shouldn't do them for the most part. By the way, here's the giveaway for today's episode, right? MAPS Powerlift. We're going to give that away to, for free to one of you lucky viewers, but you got to do this in order to win. You got to leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Tell us your favorite exercise. Tell us your least favorite exercises and why. Have a nice discussion. Good debate. You also got to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all those things and we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to an incredible program, MAPS Powerlift. Also, all month long to help people get started with their fitness or to stay consistent with their fitness because it is January is when everybody gets going. We put together three workout bundles. Each one of them includes nine months of exercise programming. That means for nine months, you have everything planned out for you. Exercises, there's video demos, reps, sets, everything set up for you. Each bundle includes multiple workout programs. Here's what they are. We have a beginner bundle, an intermediate bundle, and an advanced bundle. You can find all of them at mapsjanuary.com. Also, if you just want to try one MAPS program, if you haven't tried MAPS yet, and you want to get started, see what it's all about. The flagship program is MAPS Anabolic. We're making that program 50% off right now. You can find that at mapsred.com, but you got to use the code January50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. All righty then. Is this one going to be a controversial one, or is this going to be a uh, fluffy, nice one for It's everybody? always controversial here at Mind Pump, Adam. No, I, you know what? I want to. We did an episode a while ago about the most underrated exercise, right? So exercises that a lot of people weren't doing that were super valuable and provided an incredible benefit. Let's talk about overrated exercises, exercises <laughs> that are valued way more than they should be. Now, I do want to be clear. Well, pretty much every exercise that is in existence that's used has some value if applied appropriately. So I don't I don't want to overrated doesn't mean mm. zero value. I just want to so say So there's that the caveat. You said that and we still will get somebody who gets butt hurt because of course. you're going to say something. You're going to get I know we're all going to give an, an exercise. Whatever time stamp that was, it was said. Yeah, get yeah. ready well, to hurt, hurt some trainer feelings well, some, there's, there's going to be some exercises that some trainers just could cuz you know there's okay, we have a a, a good portion I don't know what percentage, but a good portion of our listener base are uh, trainers and their clients. Yeah. Right. So we've we've impacted yes, trainers. Sure, so send it to their clients. Yeah. They're just, they're just, the client's going to already be a fan and listening, and they're going to be like, well, "Hey, the, the, the routine that we just did yesterday had four of the five exercises that my pump said was the most over." Yeah. So, don't don't do that if you're a client. Right so now. just just to save the trainer's ass and 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 the potential that they have. They yeah, because the truth is, I mean, uh, of all these exercises, they all have application, and some of them are in some of our programs, and I've used some of these even when. I knew what I was doing because they have applications, but these the exercises that we listed are overrated because they're used for uses well beyond what they're valuable for, and they're thrown in often. They're in overused. Programming. I think that's just a, I think totally. That's, I think that's the term. Every like you said, every exercise has some value, right. and there there is an application for damn near everything that is out there. But <clears throat> there are, and I think the list that we put together. A bunch of exercises that you see all the time in the gym, and they should be the exercises that you rarely see. Yeah, just yeah. that 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 plain and or simple. Or see when they're used specifically in a particular way, right? right? Versus uh, you know getting thrown we, at the general population all the time. Well, if we had to have like some kind of rating system, right, for exercises, like we would put these as the like bottom, the least valuable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like okay, so here's the first one, and this is just burpees. Burpees became overrated. Uh, like over the last 15 years, I would say. I mean, before that, when you saw burpees was when your PE coach yeah. would punish you, and so they'd make you do a bunch of these. Right, we used to call them like Lombardies or up-downs. Yes, yeah. exactly. But burpees became this like this ingredient that you could throw into any workout to make them hard. This is how they started becoming used. Yeah, and I think it, it goes hand in hand with like boot camps and outdoor, you know, fitness classes and like the group setting was just a way to exhaust everybody and make them feel like, oh my God, this was like a crazy workout. Which by the way, this is the purpose, the sole purpose of why Joe DeSina puts them in his Spartan race shit. It's so hard. <laughs> it's to make it hard as fuck. Like, and yeah. he's, I mean, he's a big guy around uh, doing things that are hard yeah. for the sake of them being hard, right? Yeah. So, so in that setting, it makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. If you're going to, I mean, for conditioning purposes, for specific applications in the right programming, I think they're totally valuable. But I see trainers 
just using these as a way to make the workout harder because they're like, oh, I got to make this harder. Oh, yeah, burpees, and they throw them in, and people are doing well, them. An- another yeah. reason why I think they're very overrated, though, is because they're done poorly. Yes. When, it, when I look at they're the, always done to fatigue. When right? I look at the list of things that we're about to go over right now of all these overrated exercises, this has to be the one that is abused the most and done the most poorly. There's one other one that's up here that you've addressed before on a YouTube epi- yes. episode we did, um, but for sure... Uh, burpees are done so sloppy and yeah. and it can be dangerous and just just bad patterns for someone to just be going up and down just like that flop on the ground yes. and just sort of yeah make their way up uh yeah it's just not what are you teaching yourself like you're just teaching yourself bad habits and i think that uh, this is one of those exercises that kind of it just goes into that category of fatigue where it, it's almost uh, encouraged uh, to to do it to the point where you could barely even like perform it correctly. Oh yeah. How many times have you seen middle-aged, deconditioned adults doing burpees and the burpees are literally hit the deck mm-hmm. uh, and the way you hit the deck is you squat down on your toes, bend over, kick your legs back, low jump back, back is, into low position. Low back is arched. Yeah. yeah. Jump back into position right. and then don't just stand up, stand up and jump. Right. And then do it again. Right. Uh, I, like the whole thing is a bunch of danger and risk and very little value. Yeah. And, and for the trainers that are, you know, maybe you're creating, maybe you are for the day doing something that is, you know, you know, um, like a hit style or you're trying to get the heart rate elevated. Mm-hmm. That's your intention. There's other ways that you can do this. Like there's other, I mean, jumping jacks are better than this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You could do something like that. You could do uh, really slow tempo squats or just body weight Turkish get ups yep. and watch, watch the heart rate increase from doing movements like that or lunges, you know, like there's movements that you can do to elevate the heart rate to exhaust somebody without, I think, uh, fatiguing them to the level where their form is going to sacrifice this <laughs> bad, uh, and, and ju- just for the, uh, just to get them exhausted, right? Totally. There's other stuff we can 100%. do. hundred percent. All right. The next one, which has been overrated for <laughs> decades, it's been overrated as long as I've been working out and working in gyms. And also makes, uh, awkward eye contact. Yes. Uh, every time I go in <laughs> the gym. But I don't think gyms should remove them. They should keep these machines. <laughs> no. Is the... We, we, we used to jokingly call them the good girl, bad girl machine, yeah. otherwise known as hip adduction, abduction. This is the seated machine where you open your legs or you press them together. Now, it's popular because it works an area that women tend typically want to sculpt, shape, and get leaner. And so the thought process is if I train that area, that's where the body fat's going to come off of. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. You don't Your body doesn't spot reduce so and training that doesn't do that that's the main reason yes. i would say because there is value to it actually especially and i would say even more for guys uh, uh totally because of the they just don't um there's not a lot of uh, movement throughout the day where they're focused on adduction abduction well, of the hip the the reason why because there's there there's value in the movement yes uh, right that movement pattern that you're you're alluding to right now but you can get that with a band around the knees, walking to walking. Yeah, and it, you're gonna, it's gonna give you better benefit, like more com- functionality, yeah, which is way what you're more looking function- for when right, you're training right. this. Combining it when you, because here's a th- uh, somebody who has like their their knees that collapse in yes. when they squat. This is an exercise that you would you would teach them, right? You would mm-hmm. use, but I would not use the machine. No. I would I would go use a, a tube walk to simulate that, which their their feet are planted on the ground just like a squat is. It makes it's going to transfer over and benefit them more than doing that exercise. So for the few places that someone can make the case that this machine has some value, it's like, well, okay, yeah, it does, but I could also list th- something better than just There's some better functional movements you can absolutely because yeah, because what the machine aims to do really is kind of like uh, hy- like hypertrophy, these specific muscles in this very controlled, you know, setting where you're on a track and you're not stabilizing and balancing or doing anything else. And the reality is, it's a small muscle. Both the muscles that adduct and abduct are small. I mean, I don't know. I don't think bodybuilders need to really focus on hype making these grow at all. And if they did, I think it would be kind of a waste of time. They grow better by doing other exercises. Mm-hmm. From a correctional exercise purpose. There's value in training adduction and abduction, but what you said, Adam, is 100% correct. Yeah. If I'm trying to correct a movement pattern and I'm trying to work abduction, yeah. it's going to be in the setting of work a- Work on the movement. Yes. It's going to be in the setting of a walking, you know, a tube walking or while you're squatting or, yeah. or you know, yeah. one, I, here's how Side I- Side lunges or caustic squats or- Yeah. One of my favorite ways to strengthen adduction, which is more rare than having to train abduction, but adduction is bringing the knees together. 
is I would have somebody squat with a physio ball yeah, up against the wall between their legs. and squeeze something between their knees to yeah. create that that stability and tension. I would yeah. not have them or doing single leg this. stuff, ste- stepping up to a single leg balance yeah. to where they have to stabilize the hips. So you yeah. get a, a combination of both those and strengthening yeah. that. So, and and, and yeah. of all the people that use the <laughs> hip adduction and abduction machine. I would. I'll say. I'll guess, but I think I'm right. Probably less than five percent, if less, if not less than one percent, are people who are trying to correct an imbalance. Yes. No, it's gotten really po- a thigh gap. It's gotten really popular, and I don't know which uh, booty model, Instagram model, made this famous, but it's the elevating the ass oh, up God. in the air because it makes for a sexy video on Instagram yeah. that goes viral, and they feel their their glute med on fire, yeah, yeah. you know, and they're hovering their ass off the bench, and then they're yeah. doing it. It's become extremely popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially in the women's bikini space, mm-hmm. um, but again, uh, so many other movements I can do. What, whatever that, what, whatever that girl is doing f- for that exercise, mm-hmm. for that exercise, I can give you at least three to four other exercises that are far more beneficial than than doing that silly exercise. But totally. it's become famous, and I think it's become really popular because it's like makes a sexy video on Instagram. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent does. All right, the next one. I clearly remember mm. when planks became the core exercise in the gym. Oh, my God. Like, it literally, it was like overnight. Exploded. Like, okay, now planks, a stability exercise. They train they train stability in the core. By the way, most people do them wrong. They have this strong arch in the back, and they're strengthening really this hip flexor stability. Usually, people need to strengthen their core stability, so I like more of a, mm-hmm. a, a tailbone tucked or posterior pelvic tilt position. There's a video I did a long time ago that uh, kind of went viral over it. But uh, I remember specifically, and I think it was the certifications that taught this, but I remember trainers never did planks. There wasn't even an exercise. And then all of a sudden, it was the core exercise. And yeah. everybody did planks all the time. And they did them for time and how long can you go and forget your form. As long as you keep your body off the floor, that's a plank. And this is what's going to What are we for. reinforcing here the whole time we're holding this uh, with bad form? Yeah, yes. tight hip flexors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tight yeah. hip flexors, which happen to be like one of the most common problems that you have to solve for people. People that sit down at desks all day long have shortened, tight hip flexors. Crazy. And then sitting in a position in a plank, uh, you're, most of that is hip flexor that is holding. Very few people are actually using their core. They're normally resting it all on their hip flexors. Yeah, I see tightening lots, it up even more. I see lots yep. of planks uh, with anterior pelvic tilts, strengthening the anterior pelvic tilt. You hear people complain of planking hurting their back. So it's not supposed to. You're not supposed to feel this in your low back at all when you do a plank. And the way that it's programmed into workouts is almost always to fatigue and form out the window. Basically, is hold, how long can you hold yourself off the floor? I, again, I remember when this became a thing in gyms, and I want to say it was maybe 99 or 2000. All of a sudden, everybody was doing it. And then it was like, how long can you plank for? I can do two minutes. I can do three minutes. Then there were plank competitions. I don't know if you guys ever saw these. Oh, I'm guilty oh. of this. I'm just I'm guilty of this we in, had our, in our gym. Doing this in the gym. Yeah. It became very popular when I was in my early twenties training in gyms. And just like you said, and there's it, it's two pronged here, right? So not only did we, you know, think that we were doing some good as, with helping with core training, but it also became uh, an easy, lazy way to end your training session. I mean, you go have a client go sit in a five. Oh, we got 15 minutes left. What are we going to do? Yeah. Go over, go over, (laughs) you know, over there where you get to sit down or relax and they're not moving anywhere. There's not a lot of coaching going on. You just hold it. Let's see how long. And all I do is I watch a watch for fucking five (laughs) minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like guilty for sure. Yeah. hundred percent guilty of that. Um, and I think it was justified because I thought that I was helping or doing some good. Uh, but like you said, a clear indication, you brought up the low back thing. I mean, that's a clear indication that you are, are resting on the hip flexors, right? The hip flexors are starting to pull in that area. Those give out, and then you feel that stress in the low back. If you do, if you actually do them correctly, you will feel in your core and abs, which very few people that get down and do a plank. Can actually get into that position. Yeah, get into the position where they feel it in their abs. In fact, most people have to do it off their knees when they do it the right way, and they feel themselves really activating the core uh, right. the right way. Now, that again, it doesn't mean that there isn't applications to planks. Planks are in a lot of our programs, but we program them a specific way. Um, and most of the time, people use them just haphazardly, and they're not programmed properly. And they're overrated as a core strengthening, building exercise. They have value, but by themselves, uh, again, just uh, totally overrated. All right, this next one is going to cause a little bit of uh, a little bit of controversy. I know it, and that's the leg extension. Probably, mm. I would argue. The most popular leg machine in the gym. Would you guys agree or disagree? That or the leg press, yeah. <laughs> right, right? Yeah, yeah. It's got to be, right? <clears throat> I I, you know, that. I would I would actually 
argue with you on this one uh, five, well, maybe more than that now, eight, eight, nine years before we got together. It wasn't until you introduced Sissy Squats to me would I have argued this. Like mm -hmm. I, I just thought that one of the best ways to isolate the quads has to be the leg extensions um, and, and, and the biggest bang for buck for isolating the quads, right? Obviously, you know, leg press and, and squat and hack squat work those, but you get a lot of other things you're working. Yeah. And if I just want to work my quads, I thought leg, leg extensions were the superior movement until I did a sissy squat. Mm -hmm. After doing a sissy squat and the range of motion that you can do with a sissy squat and the and the uh, how functional it is and the amount of strength that you can build from that, hands down, I don't think it comes even well, close. Well, for me, it was in the same same thing with the sissy squat, but also, like, I was just always preferred, like, front squats. I always preferred, like, to do a goblet squat yep. or something like that with my heels elevated and, you know, be able to do something a little bit more of, like, a compound exercise versus, you know, an isolated exercise like that. So I just, I never really found, uh, you know, unless it's for, like, a rehabilitative purpose. There you but, go. But most uh, physical therapists even talked me out of using that yeah the shearing the sheer force on the patellar tendon and right. the positioning i could see rehab applications i could see poor connection which is not too common but sometimes you see poor connection to quad especially after an injury um where maybe it's helping you really connect and squeeze and so when you're well, yeah, imagine first connecting someone who, imagine someone who just had like an mcl tear yeah right yeah. okay that makes sense right like i don't i'm not gonna throw a barbell back squat on that person as their first exercise they're gonna do things like leg extension so yeah. keep that in mind as we talk about stuff like mm -hmm. that there are that's a specific application for yep. somebody that where that machine makes sense yeah. there's a reason why it's still in the gym bodybuilders include it because it's uh it's cheap volume meaning uh it adds volume not a lot of stress and damage so you get the pump. So it's like one of those what they call finisher exercises. Right. So, you know, I could see that. Less but demanding. But keep in mind, bodybuilders, leg extensions are at the end of a, you know, 20 set you know, workout. With you should, you have to, if you're going to go that direction, because you know you're going to get pushback on this one, by the way. Of course. We'll probably get, out of all the ones we have on here, we might get the most pushback on this one. Of and course. I, and one of the arguments you're going to get is the e-stim argument with how much, or the, uh, the what's the machine that uh, lights, shows the how much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, yeah. What, what, uh, God, now you screwed me. Come on. on. Muscle stim. Yeah. I, yeah, you know, the, uh, the MRIs or the, that not, shows the activation. Yes, yeah, why am I not able activation, yeah. Uh, no, no. The what map? is the, what, you're on the right track. I can't even think of the name of the machine right now that tells you how much of EMG? The, yes, thank you. EMG. Cool. Thank you. So you're going to get that because there's studies around the leg extension yeah. showing how much the quads are lit up on one of those yeah, but machines. That doesn't mean strength gains, doesn't mean muscle gains, doesn't mean functional. It, it gives you, it just it talks about how much the muscle's active. Uh, so it doesn't tell you much. Like you can your your biceps or let's say your lats, for example, you'll light them up with a straight arm pull down, but that's not gonna they're not gonna build as much as when you can do a pull up, just from the sheer tension uh, and, and load. So same thing with this exercise. Um, it's not very functional. Leg extension. Like if you got if you add fifty pounds to your leg extension, you're not gonna see a whole no. lot of carryover no, to anything translate else. Translate well. No, but if you add fifty pounds to your sissy squat, you'll see a lot more carryover. Uh, so it's a much more functional. Now I will say this: CC squats are hard, so you may need a band for assistance. Some people just can't do them because or it's you a hard. You assisted by holding on to something. Yes, right? so or, or hold on to something. I, that's how I started. Absolutely. You know what though? The same thing happened to me with <clears throat> leg extensions as what happened to me with leg curls when I talked to you guys about. So I went on this, this kick, and it was when we all first got together. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I really started deadlifting like crazy. And along with that, I was also barbell back squatting more than I ever did either. Mm -hmm. I, and I completely eliminated some of these staple exercises, leg extensions being one of them and leg curls being the other one. And those were both exercises that I had done for a, over a decade. And I'd reached the kind of like the peak of my strength in those two areas, completely stopped doing them. All I did was barbell back squat. All I did was deadlift for those, those for that, those muscle groups. Mm -hmm came back to it after, I don't know, maybe eight months to a year of training that way and PR'd my leg extension yep. and leg curls without doing it at all. So remember, I'm not training it at all. Come back to it, not done it at all for eight months and was doing more weight on both leg extension and leg curls than I ever had in my entire life after I had stopped doing it for eight months because of how powerful deadlifting and squatting was for those muscle yeah. groups. Now, would the re reverse have happened? No. Not even close. Yeah. Had you avoided squats and deadlifts and did just leg extensions and leg curls, you would have come back far weaker in those other you know big compound lifts. Right. So the carryover is a big thing. But again, applications in certain cases, it's just overused, uh, which makes it you know overrated. All right, the next one is the pec deck. Okay, so now I know that there's value in 
exercises like the pec deck, like a cable crossover or a cable fly. I think those are pretty valuable. The pec deck really was a poorly designed chess machine. I mean, it puts you in external rotation. Yeah, you have to be specific. You're talking about the one where your arm, with the pads, yes. right? Yes, like this. Yeah. I like to squeeze it in. Yes, that's different, right? Okay. That's different, where, where you're able to, to put yourself in, in this kind of position here where you're not externally rotated, right? At the, at the humerus, that's the upper arm. Peck deck with the arm up here, and you don't see them as often anymore. I think because people like this right here is not a very lever, yeah. not a very good feeling in the shoulder, <laughs> no. and and but they still exist. In fact, unnecessary I would, stress on the shoulder. I remember yeah. as a trainer getting, and I would do it because you know the bodybuilders did it. But I remember always thinking like, I don't like the way this feels. I had a trainer come up to me and say, "Put your hands on the pads." I would do this. Yeah, I would, oh, I, I, would, I would let the I pads. I don't want that till later. Yeah, I would let the pads rest in between my, the crook of my arms, and I would do that. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I, I actually at first grabbed the pads, and then mm -hmm. later on, I learned to do what you did, and it was like mind blowing. Whoa, this is a totally different exercise. So, the reason why this the pec deck is overrated is because it's poorly designed. Now, some people can do this and have no pain, which is totally fine. But I dare you, if you like to do this kind of external rotated pec deck, try bringing your 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 arm in a better position. See how much more connected you feel to your chest. Yeah, and like you said, there's other machines that actually do that where your arms can go out wide and it has a totally different functional feel to it as opposed to having my arms limited to this position, which does put unnecessary stress. It's like on the a, you know, in, in jujitsu there's an arm there's an arm lock called a, an Americana. It almost puts you in that position. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, it's like at any to. moment you're like, oh totally. Well I've seen people get hurt doing that. Because like, yeah. it has a, like a thing yeah. where you can adjust and I've seen people put it way back and then they load and then it goes yeah. it goes a drop Worst it. Worst thing you can do. Yeah. And they hurt their shoulder. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So this next one, uh by the way, I was by the way, I just want to be clear. Guilty of using all these exercises wrong when I train clients, especially in the first half Same. of my career. But probably the most guilty of all of these things is what I'm about to talk about. <laughs> okay, which this is, is this one's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, hey, I was known still, for this hey, This for a while. is still very common in Super gyms right common. now. And especially with early trainers, it's like a easy way to try and hit everything. You it know? is. Yep. It's the combo exercises. This is where you take Ugh. multiple exercises and... And dilute them. Yeah, so like, <laughs> yeah, like make them shitty. Make yeah. them shittier. This is how you take a, hey, this is how, that's a way to say this. This is how you take a bunch of good exercises and yeah. make them shittier. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> Shootify it. Here was my favorite one. This was the one, I don't know, I just, I used this it all the time. I, I know where you're at. Right, Lunge going. to curl to press. I would oh, I would add to that. Bro. Lunge to curl to balance to press. That's oh, oh, I did that too. Bro, that was my move oh, right there. Oh. That was my move from like 20 no. to 26. Back dude. lunge to step up to press <laughs> to back lunge to row. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Is, I mean, I got crazy. Yeah, yeah, and when you when you combine all these different exercises, you actually start to take away the value of each of the exercises and it just becomes an overall, I don't know, a burning calorie movement, in which case the movement doesn't really matter as much. Well, what what you yeah. really do is this. Like okay, we just what'd you say? A uh, lunge, a balance, a curl, a press, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's four exercises. Let's we've said this before. If every exercise has a value, let's say a one to ten, one yeah. being terrible, ten being great, and let's say those those four exercises have an average of eight, or they have a you know, one's a seven, one's an eight, one's a nine, one's a six, or like that, you literally just take off four points on each one yes. of them. Mm -hmm. That's by combining Combining them all together and, and, and their value when standing alone, uh, what they value you as far as what they give to you, by combining them like that, you literally take three to four points off yeah. of all And of them. part of the problem is the weight that you use for five different exercises is not appropriate for m half or most of them, right? So what I can lunge with right. while holding is not what I'm going to use to curl and not what I'm going to use to shoulder press. So when you're doing this exercise with a client, they fatigue on the curl before mm -hmm. they fatigue on the lunge. Or Which is why you got to use five pound dumbbells. One of them yes. is, yeah, way demanding, and the rest is like are basically useless. Yes, and the form starts to break down on one of them, and then it's the client is almost encouraged, not even, uh, you know, not even you're, you're not even explicitly encouraging this. It's just implicit in kind of the movement that form isn't as important. Now, okay, some of these movements we've talked about, you know, exceptions to the rule of are where we would still use yeah. it or where it has application. Do you see any application here or is there any exception to the rule here where knowing what you know now today, would you ever program that? I would combine maybe two in a movement. I wouldn't do the three or four. Um, like I could see like a squat to balance or a back step lunge to toe touch if I'm really working on 
you know, like hip extension and stability type of stuff. But when you start to get to three, four, you know, <clears throat> then you start to do the man scientist. What's that? What What is it called when people make a complicated machine to do a simple task? Oh, Rube's Goldberg. Yeah, it's like you're doing like the Rube's Goldberg with exercises. Like, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, what was it, Doug? You know what it's called? Oh, okay. no, it sounds right. I sounds about right. Cool. Okay, so no, but yeah, I um, obviously you see that in lunge matrix, or I've done this with with step ups is a way to program different ways of hitting multiple planes. But as long as you're controlled and you're uh, basically loaded similar and you're not trying to add like, you know, curling, pressing and all these things to interrupt it. Um, I think that that for me, um, you, you know, I, f I find justification there when yeah. I'm trying to kind of move in different um, directions. Yeah. yeah, I told I told one of my last clients, right, that uh, Christine, who I still I still see occasionally. Um, that if there was a movement that I would like you to be able to continue to do forever, right? So she's in her mid fifties. I said, it's the step up to balance to toe touch. Yeah. So yeah, I can um, see lots of value in that. And, and, and yeah, I, that, and definitely. even though I know I'm not going to build tremendous strength with that, but what I'm the, the functionality of that movement, the, being capable to step up on a high step to stabilize the hips and then to hinge the yeah. body over and sense. stabilize the hips in the hinge, I just think is uh, it, it hits so many things that you want to keep healthy as you advance into age. So I do see like an application for that. And mm -hmm. I do see how, you know, having somebody who's an advanced age saying, hey, this mm -hmm. is something I want you to be able to do forever for as long as you can and i've told that's exactly what i said is listen if you and i move on from each other and i don't see you in a decade from now or what like that like and there's if there's one thing you can remember from me be able to do this yeah, yeah. And, and, and just keep making sure that you can do this i also like uh, certain exercises where you can maintain an isometric position but also have to do work like so yeah it, i get what you're saying right so if like i'm what? doing like so if i'm getting rid of the, the bench and say i'm using a stability ball or just the ground to do a hip bridge and then I'm doing a press. Yeah. You know, something like that where I'm including, uh, you know, the hip bridge is the isometric uh, hold. And oh, then I'm doing okay. a yeah, press. Or a tripod position with a row or something like that right. where you're using the, the, the core stability. Exactly. Like I could see that. And again, uh, combo exercises done properly in the right application have value, but they were almost are never used that way. And you know, by the way, you know where they came from? They came from group exercise classes. That's yeah. who started Yeah, this. it reminds me of body pump shit. That's exactly where yeah, it came from. Yeah, when you from. look at like the, you know, 24-hour fitness or the Les Mills, like body pump type classes, they're like That's these, what they did. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah, for for conditioning, like it's, again, so this is like a little bit. Uh, it's cringy for me because I still like I'll do combo stuff for conditioning, but it's different because I, I I feel like that's the purpose that I'm focused on is a controlled, you know, like for instance with kettlebells, like I'll I'll do transitionary exercises, but it just flows well between the, the yeah. different and exercises. The, and the truth is, and this is the truth now, the more th movements you combine together into one movement, the more crucial experience in programming is yeah. because you're adding more variables and if you know what you're doing then you're putting together something that's going to work really well if you don't know what you're doing what you're actually doing is taking all those ex like we said earlier all those exercises and make them far less valuable so that's why they're so damn uh, overrated is because when you see them being done it's almost never done by someone who understands how to combine those things yep. all right the next one this is uh this one we might get a little heat from uh <laughs> really maybe because it's like a, <laughs> it's like in every butt building you know whatever workout for women or whatever donkey kickbacks i'm talking about the ones on the floor with no weight or with an ankle weight and they're doing the donkey kickback now i could see value in like correcting an imbalance this, this as Jane a fonda or as yeah. a primer i yeah. mean i mean as a primer absolutely tremendous value as a primer as an exercise to build muscle in the butt trash Totally. Absolute yeah. trash. Yeah. Like the worst thing that if you're out there and you're at home and you're doing these things, trying to build a butt, like good luck. You're, you're digging a pool, you know, with a spoon. You feel it, but you're not really stressing or putting any demand on well, it. So that's, that's the point to make right there is there's this misconception. And by the way, like I fell for this too, as a young trainer is thinking that just because I feel it, 
Yeah, that's the true. most from the exercise. Like I, I, I remember even telling people that, like, oh, you should do the ones that you feel feel the most. It's like no, and that kind of goes back to the leg extension point you're making. It's just just because you feel a movement in the area you're targeting the most doesn't mean it's going to build the most muscle. No. There. It's you know when it's valuable yeah. to feel something when you can't feel that muscle doing anything else, which is the priming point. Right. Yeah, so like if you have poor connection to your glute muscles, and you're like, I can't feel them when I hip thrust. I can't feel them when I barbell squat. I can't feel them when I deadlift. Then doing something like this helps you connect to the muscle, just like maybe leg extensions. Like, I can't connect to my quads. I never feel them. Well, this exercise isolates it so much that you're going to feel it, and it's going to help you feel it in these other more valuable exercises. But they're not used that way. You almost never see donkey kickbacks being used that way. They're almost always used as a butt builder, in which case the tension is too low, the reps are too high. Um, and it's just an ineffective butt building. And I exercise. would, I would see it all. To, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's up there too with like the, the the jump lunges and all these like high intensity butt exercises that I would see. And I'd see, I'd see these bikini competitors. That's when I saw it the most, right? The, doing these movements. And I'm like, oh my god, you you do this at the front of your workout and you fatigue the fuck out of your glutes. And then even if you do good movements like squatting and deadlifting later, that muscle's so damn fatigued, yeah. it's not activating or working. Your other muscles are taking over the movement that's probably really good for that. Mm -hmm. It's like if you really want to fire the glutes and you want to use it as a primer, okay, do a round or two of it. Uh, with, so you can feel it. Yeah, that's it. that's it. You're not trying to fatigue it. You're not trying to get it burning like crazy. It's like you're just trying to activate it, get it to light up, and then go do the movements like squatting and deadlifting and good mornings and these other movements that are really going to build the glutes. You're wasting your time doing yeah, that. Yeah, I remember um, reading an article. I, I wish I remember who wrote this. And the argument you're making was made so well in this article that it completely changed how I worked out myself. I was a kid and it was that it was the argument about you know oh you just because you feel an exercise doesn't mean or a muscle burns doesn't mean it's a great muscle builder. And the example that this person used was brilliant. They said you could extend your arms out to your sides and do shoulder circles for um, for two minutes and your shoulders will be on fire, but they're not going to build like with an overhead press. And I thought Abs that's so true. Yeah. And that made perfect sense to me. And I changed my training up far better results uh, after that. All right, the next one, I didn't necessarily want to put this up here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys, you did. He's like, I'm not going to write Justin that and I twisted Sal's arm to put this one in there because in a recent episode, I don't remember what the question was or what Sal brought up tricep kickbacks. And I, I vividly remember the look on Justin's face because it was probably mirrored the look on my face. <laughs> yeah. Like, did that fool just say tricep kickbacks for an exercise? Yeah. <laughs> I, so I, I, I tend to like them just because I can get a good pump and squeeze in the muscle. But I can see your argument as to why they're overrated. People do these in place of a close grip push up or a press or it was a, 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 a bottom extension. of the barrel yeah, yeah. i mean I, I, i'm guilty of every female i trained from 2000 to 2005 had tricep kickbacks in their workout every female mm -hmm. every, yeah. it was just yeah. it just and i used I to program i used to do it where they were uh, one 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 knee was on the bench and the other leg was out straight so they were trying to have to kind of balance <laughs> oh, and stabilize oh, and then, <laughs> oh yeah you so, combined two worthless I exercises i did i, did. I combined two worthless <laughs> exercises I'm guilty as yeah. charged right so i you know i did Man, this type of Shit. And I did it for years, uh, you know, thinking that it was a great exercise. Again, when when someone does a tricep kickback, they they feel it, they and it's hard to extend it, and so they feel that tricep. But kind of like to your shoulder uh, analogy is if you know just because you feel it in the tricep right there, yeah. that shit is not going to come close to a dip or a close. Yeah, I could, I could I could I could right. name seven exercises that are more effective. That's right, and maybe yeah. that's a good way to to say this, right? Like we're not saying like we've said already. Yeah, it's like a rating system. It, like very I can name five to seven seven yeah. exercises better than every single thing that's on true. here. And, and that's a good way to put this is that that's what we mean by overrated. Not that they don't have some value or they don't have application. It's just that if I can name seven other movements yeah. that Literally are better than that movement. Literally anything named kickback in there is garbage. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think what else is good. Unless it's a, a government Just kickback. go with that standard. Yeah, those yeah, are garbage. Give me my money. I mean, back. except for that, that money kickbacks. Exist. Yeah. Does that exist? I'm yeah. talking about exercises, not, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so we have some honorable mentions yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that, that we're going to bring up. They didn't make the cut, but we had to talk about They didn't make them. the cut, but really that's because they're kind of general categories. They're not specific <laughs> exercises. I, we or, all, or maybe we thought people wouldn't be familiar with them. Too, yeah. Some people don't know what they are. Yeah, like not enough people are doing them to really talk about them. But yeah. I'll bring one up. I know you guys have your own. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's and I find this so hilarious. I think people are bored or trying to make cool videos for Instagram 
or they're smelling their own farts. They think they're so much smarter <laughs> this happens, than yes. they really are. And that's when people use machines in ways that they're totally not designed to be used. So like a good example is like getting on the hammer strength chest press and then doing it sideways. Like they, you ever see that sideways Joey chest press? Oh, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> so popular. Hilarious. Or, Didn't he make that popular? I'd never seen it until that kid did I, it. Yeah. Like, he was doing this all day. Yeah. Like what do you- Work your inner chest. No, <laughs> you don't. And it's stupid. Um, this one, I've seen this one many times. I don't understand why you're going to do this, but people use the leg press like a shoulder press. Oh, that was an interesting oh. one when that got popular. Yeah, like they're sitting on the part where you're supposed to lay back on, yeah. and then the platform, they're pressing they're with their pressing. arms. Whoa, There's like seven other shoulder machines in the gym, and then dumbbells and you barbells. Do, yeah. I don't understand what the purpose is. I don't know. Again, I think people are just like, they think they're smarter yeah. than inventors of machines or something. They're like, I'm going to So I like to admit every time totally. that I did some of those stupid things, I definitely did stuff like this. And I totally remember why I did it. So as you a young- people look at you. I did. I did. Yeah. I wanted the attention. Not from like gym members, but from people potentially that would buy training from yes. me. Yes. It was a conversation starter. I love to take a- <laughs> Because I understood biomechanics. I understood how the muscles needed to be- I want to hire that trainer. And I could take- I could take like Whoa, a calf a raise, take. okay? I could take a calf raise machine and turn it into a shrug He's machine. He's so creative. You know what I'm saying? I could do something like that. I'd, I've seen that. Yeah. I would do shit the like calf that. calf machine like And you would get the oh, craziest man. looks and it would always create- Somebody would come over and be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, well, let me- let you know what? Let I'm, me book an appointment with you so I can reverse explain. hack Listen. squat, like <laughs> yeah, uh, front I'm gonna, squats. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a pass, dude. Because okay, you're okay. you're building your business and you're using it right. There was there was a little strategy. A little, that was very smart advertising. Actually, the way you explained that made a lot of sense. <laughs> I did. So that's so I I'm guilty of doing this, but I did have a desired outcome. The desired outcome was it was so unique or weird or different that somebody would question it or challenge me, and then I would be able to explain why I'm doing yeah. it, and then now I could pretend like I'm oh, this really smart I've seen trainer. People do shrugs on a preacher curl machine. I saw a girl do hip thrusts on a leg uh, extension. That's actually become machine. more popular. More popular yeah, I've seen to that. get I've underneath seen that. A, yeah. like a leg extension machine. Have you seen that? And turn oh, it into yeah, yeah they take a hip thrust. Yeah, yeah, they have. Yeah. I mean, play. look, I guess I mean creativity. I guess just means you're doing things different. So in that case, these are very creative people, but so little value. <clears throat> Here, it, it's just it's it's hilarious. Machines, use them the way they're it's designed. Comical. You don't. Know, if you want to get creative, do it with free weights. I, and I want to make a point about those people, right? Because I, I've seen this. I also see that in the bikini competitor uh, community a lot. Is the person like that? It, it's not that big of a deal, you know. So what? That person's in the gym for two hours. They probably did a yeah, bunch it's of things. Junk there. volume. They're just but, yeah, food. whatever. You know, chalk it up but to them being bored. What happens, okay, in the gym space is some quiet, shy lady sees that who's just getting into fitness and she sees the way that girl looks. Yep. And she looks amazing and then she's doing this stupid exercise. Yeah. Yeah. And now Instead she, of squatting and Right, and so then she thinks that and the, and, and this is where yeah. we get this kind of monkey That's where see. That's really annoying. Yeah, monkey see, monkey do type of behavior where somebody sees a body that looks really good, they see him doing a stupid movement and then it gets legs. It's like, yeah. oh wow, that must be, look at her or mm -hmm. look at him and he's yeah. doing the sideways pec deck. I'm going to try and do that. So I think that's where, the, and to that person, you know, who cares? Like, and there, and I know their argument back. Well, look at me, or look how it's like. Okay, well, that's because of the well, two hours it. you spent in here yeah, doing yeah. all the other shit. Well, I, I mean, mine kind of goes in line with the machine because it, technically it is a machine because if it's an, an assisted pull up, you know, it, it's there to assist your pull up. Oh, I know what you're talking not. About. <laughs> it's for a leg press. Oh yeah, not to step on it and push it down using gravity and everything else. Okay, like, I don't understand that. At I just. All. You can and step I'm, up on I'm a waiting bench. there to use it, uh, you know, for its intended purpose. And somebody's there doing this all day. Yeah, it's okay. You want to you want to press one leg? Use a leg press. You could step up on a. Step. Yeah, you got to explain just, what Justin is talking about. There's a machine. Um, yeah, they're they're normally called even. either assisted pull up or a gravitron. And you step up on it, and it, you put your knees on it. It has weight, and it assists you. Or there's a bar that you stand right, on. Right, or there's yeah, there's a bar you stand on, and it's, it helps you to do pull-ups. Great machine for that purpose, right, mm -hmm. for if you're actually doing pull-ups on it. And some trend started uh, maybe a decade ago, or that's probably I saw it at least six, seven years ago the first time, uh, where somebody would get up on there, and they put one leg, and they push it down. Yeah. The stupidest thing ever. It's just like a lunge, a step up, a leg press. I mean, there I can name twenty. So exercises. many other options that you can get way more muscle activity and and function out of it than whatever you're doing with that. Yeah, and even if you used enough resistance to make a difference, you would just step your body up.
You would, it would push exactly. it down. It yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, to no, exactly. it wouldn't work. Yeah. If, it, yeah, if it actually you actually used enough weight, you wouldn't be able to move it down. No, you, you would have stand to up. step it's up. It's already helping you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, okay. So if that's yours, then I want to add one that that I and I think the reason is because I want to see it end. And a, a, another popular trend that you saw on Instagram, which is the 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 guys and girls I've seen guilty of this, but mostly guys uh, doing the the crunches, uh, hanging upside down with a friend punching you <laughs> in the or stomach. The, yeah, yeah, or the leg lifts with. <laughs> I thought that was just one if, viral video, and, but and no. there, there is only one application for that, is if you were a fucking fighter. If yeah. you were an actual fighter. Rocky did them in yeah, Rocky yeah, won, yeah. and he's a Dude, fighter. that's where it yeah. started, right? That's so, exactly where it started. So oh, if, unless you were a fighter, it has, does not, and, and then really the application and the adaptation you're seeking is, can I take a fucking punch while I'm doing other shit? And yeah. that's what fighters have to do. Yes. Fighters have to move around, throw punches, and take a punch in their in their stomach. So if you were that person, then okay, it, you yes. just fight Everybody else, you're an idiot. Getting hit in a yep. muscle does not induce muscle hypertrophy or strength <laughs> or fat loss. Literally, when boxers do movement, because it's it's okay. It comes from old school boxing exercises with medicine balls. Old school medicine balls were actually filled with sand. They were big and they were heavy. Now we have rubber ones and stuff like that. And boxers would get hit in the gut with them. And what they did is they trained you to breathe and how to take a punch. Because there's actually right. a technique to being able to take a Breathe blow. Breathe while bracing. Yes, there's a technique to it, and that's what they're learning. There's zero other application. In fact, yeah. it will only reduce the ability for you to work your abs through full range of motion. It, I think it's one of those that it's it's one of those things where they're like, I want to look cool. Yeah. Yeah. I want to look really cool. Oh, yeah. This is the I mean, dumbest thing ever. You know what I we should do? It. We should go to a gym and do that for other body parts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like why I do curls. Punch <laughs> just in the glutes. Yeah. Yeah. Squat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> squat again. <laughs> 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 Can we make a video of that? Bro, please? that would be that's the next viral video oh, right man. there. New butt oh. extra. Why are you doing curls? Be amazing. Punch please. me in the bicep. Please. Please. Oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. So there you have it. Overrated exercises and some honorable mentions. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. Also, you can find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Now, Adam and I have been shadow banned by Instagram, but if you try real hard, you can find us, and then you can find out while we're shadow banned. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. 